Welcome back to Bog Panda. Tonight, we're going to talk about the greatest console of all time, 32X. Kelly said he will fight you if you disagree with us on this. I, <laughs> He will punch you in the face like Chuck Garrick. I am Dr. Mike at Official Pagan on Everything and joining me as always. I might push you in the road like Dave LaGreca, <laughs> but, but Chuck is completely safe. But hi, everybody. I'm Kelly at K-E-L-L-Y-T-H-U-L on social media. If you have the opportunity and the inclination, and we sure hope you do, uh, appreciate it if you would subscribe to the channel. Helps us out. Leave a few comments. Give us some likes if there's some material that you feel warrants it. Uh, and uh, check out the site. A lot of good stuff on there. There's music reviews, track-by-track uh, -track stuff on albums, usually albums by Al Scooper. But there's some other stuff out there as well. Uh, to check out on that. Uh, and most importantly, you can tell your friends that you subscribe to the world's shortest podcast, Hard No, if you subscribe to the Bog Panda YouTube channel. This comes free with that subscription. So you become a hard free no with your free subscription. Free with your free subscription is a free subscription to Hard No, the world's shortest podcast. So be sure and kind of check that out. And uh, you'll probably be incredibly enthusiastic at that point. Want to show your support for hard no or bog panda in general, our ever growing selection of merchandise is available. There is a link in the description uh, for you to go check that stuff out, uh, get that gear, take pictures of yourself in it, send us our way. I'm not going to use any of the colorful language that Mike tends to put around this whole sending us picture stuff. Uh, but wait, just like a shot. If you get one of our t-shirts, let us, let us see that. That would be super cool. And we greatly appreciate it. So um, that's good. So the greatest council ever, huh? That's or, what I'm going with. Greatest council okay. ever. Okay. Well, you know, tell me more. <laughs> <laughs> so 32X for you younger folks who might not know was, uh, so Sega was a, a great company. Is it is, is still a really good company who's putting out great stuff. But Sega at one point was neck and neck with Nintendo, dominating most of console gaming throughout the 90s. Uh, everything was switching from 16 bit to 32 bit. So they wanted to jump on that. And Sega was split into two different companies, Sega of America and Sega of Japan, which were two separate entities under the same parent company. And they developed products separately in a sort of competitive way, which up until this point had kind of worked in their favor. But Sega of America wanted to make 32X, which was going to build off of the Genesis. So it was basically an upgrade to your existing console, similar to like what you do with a computer, expanding the memory and the hard drive and things like that to upgrade your Genesis to a 32-bit console. The idea being that the early 32-bit consoles like 3DO were insanely expensive for the time. So for just a couple hundred dollars, as opposed to the 700 plus dollars that something like a 3DO or a CDI would run you for just a couple hundred dollars, you could upgrade your system to a 32X. The games were a little more expensive, but they looked better, sounded better, all that good stuff. The problem yeah, and, was. <laughs> and $700 back in the time, it now roughly translates to 2.4 billion. I'm pretty yeah. sure just to check my math on <laughs> With it, inflation. Yeah. It was a lot more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Basically if you wanted a 3DO or CDI when they were released, it would be the equivalent of today of slapping down a few thousand dollars for a system, a controller and a game. And that's insane. <laughs> if you think about it. So for the cost of a few hundred dollars, you could upgrade your Genesis to make it a 32 bit console. Um, Sega of Japan disagreed and wanted to use the same processor set to build a standalone 32 bit console that would be more powerful to upgrade everything and sell it separately. So they were working on these separately, kind of sabotaging each other and surprise to nobody who doesn't who obviously that doesn't sound like a great idea both systems failed the 32x and the saturn 32x never even had a chance um it's remembered as being like this flop but in reality they never even manufactured the units that were ordered it just never had a chance to really get out and unfortunately some of the games were rushed out and doom was one of those games 
Sega wanted to have the first version of Doom out, even though their version is actually a port of the Jaguar version of Doom. It's not a port of the PC version. So id Software made a console version of Doom for Jaguar, and that became the blueprint for all of the console ports because it was their official console version. So there were changes made to it and things like that that they felt made it run better on a console. So this is actually a port of the Jaguar version, but beat the Jaguar version to market because Sega cut a lot of corners. The thing is, it's still a really good game. And considering the the hardware that it's running on, it's a kind of amazing that it runs as well as it does. But there were problems. Because they rushed it out, it is missing content. And the music is absolutely terrible. <laughs> and so the reason the music is so awful is because they ran into the same problem that Atari ran into for the Jaguar port which is they needed all of the processing power of the system to keep the frame rate high. That's really important because as you'll see, perhaps Kelly and I are going to talk about some of the other ports in an upcoming episode. Frame rate's a big problem with every other port of it, basically, that came out in that timeline. Uh, Jaguar and 32X are the only ones that run smooth. Jaguar runs a little bit better than 32X, but 32X runs pretty consistently smoothly until you get up to the higher difficulty levels and there's a bunch of enemies on screen. You really don't run into a lot of slowdown or anything like that. It's also nearly full screen. The window, there's a little bit of a border around it. Again, that's going to come into play later (laughs) in some of the other things. So at nearly full screen and running at a very smooth, steady frame rate, Even some PCs couldn't do that. I remember playing Doom at friends' houses who didn't have the greatest setup and we would have to shrink the picture size and we would and it would still be choppy and everything. So even some PCs weren't running Doom that great. So the fact that this 32X, a budget add on to an existing console was running Doom as smoothly as it was. But the trade off there, the slightly smaller picture size and just like the Jaguar completely ditching the music because they needed that processing power to keep the frame rate as high as it is. Unlike Jaguar, though, they this was attached to another console to your Genesis. So they had the idea of, well, we're better than Jaguar. We can have music. We'll just have the Genesis play it. The problem with that is it wasn't optimized for Genesis. So they're trying to make it play something it can't play. And that's what it sounds like. A bunch of distorted noise that's playing. So most people just end up turning the sound off anyway. It was stupid that they did that. It should have just been silent during the game like the Jaguar version was. Because that's better than what they did. But between the missing content, the terrible audio, a lot of people felt disappointed in what they got. Again, cut to a couple years later, people didn't know how good they had it. (laughs) Once it started popping up on 3DO and Super Nintendo and things like that. But at the time, people were disappointed in what they got. So fans of Doom, and there are many, many of us out there, have started making patches for it that slowly fix these issues. And this Doom Resurrection project is probably the most notable thing where it's filling in all the blanks. But what's great about it, part of the problem with digital games and patches and emulation and stuff and even a lot of these homebrew games is their thing. They're doing things in these games that are sure it technically plays on that system on the emulators and things like that, but it couldn't have realistically played on the cartridges of the time. This is not the case for that. The reason it was missing all that content isn't because 32 X wasn't powerful enough to do it. Sure. It's not as powerful as the other 32 bit systems that were out at the time, but it wasn't meant to be, it was meant to be a budget upgrade. It could have done all of this natively right on the the hardware. It's just that Sega rushed it out and completed. That's the problem. They did this to themselves. So not only does all this stuff work within the actual framework of the 32X, you can play this on a cartridge. So you can put this on a flash cartridge and play it on real hardware. So this 100% could have existed if Sega had actually just taken the time to do it correctly. Now, what are your thoughts? We're, we are going to be doing some Doom stuff. Spoilers. We're going to be doing some Doom stuff. So you, you've had a little more exposure to 32X now, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the the cult indoctrination continues here with, you know, the, the I uh, just hear this, you know, Mike will call my cell phone in the middle of the night and just go 32X, 32X. 
So it's uh it's disturbing. He says other things too, but it's a family show. So we'll just leave it at that. <laughs> um but uh yeah, I'm I'm intrigued. I'm super impressed with this Doom Resurrection project because uh this is around three dot the version three dot one now. Uh and they continue to your point. They rushed it out, so they did they skipped a bunch of levels. Part of this project has been restoring those levels. Uh, adding in other functionality in terms of being able to kind of save at any point in time, uh, better ability to kind of adjust your 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 brightness and those those pieces there, uh, music. So they have original. So they have music's now added. Music's now added in a way that uh, sound sounds good, but they've actually moved away from the original soundtrack to some impressive stuff um, that's been done independently for this. But it's just. Uh, just fantastic, which is what you saw on the 3DO as well, which was unique music, which was, actually wasn't bad either. But that's it's one of the few times you mentioned 3DO and say this part wasn't too bad <laughs> when it comes to do yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, the music. So the, the music stuff's uh, new, uh, and the uh, inner the, the bosses, whether it's the, the cyber demon or um, uh, it, the uh, the the big spider guy. <laughs> yeah. Cyber demon and the spider demon are missing from the 32 X version. And uh, because so of those, the missing those are now, those are in 3.1. Yeah. So, so that, that's a, that's a pretty cool addition. So they, they continue to bring it to where it's going to become pretty soon. The best port. I think it's, it's on the road for that. Uh, so, so I'm excited to see it. I'm impressed with the work people are doing on it. Um, and, uh, it's good to kind of see, uh, them making up for what was an, an unfortunate business decision on Sega's part to say, well, we just need to be out. Uh, as yeah. Opposed- and that, and that's the worst part about it because the coolest thing about this is that it runs on real hardware. You can play this on a real 32 X on a cartridge. So there's no, this, this isn't something like a lot of these types of projects, they're expanding it to some gigantic ROM size that wouldn't have realistically fit on a cartridge. This literally plays on a regular 32X cartridge on your original system, no helper chips, no nothing else. So that really underlines how much Sega dropped the ball just to try to beat everybody else out to it. So that kind of sucks. But I have always contended that 32X is an amazing system and that despite its shortcomings, which were self-inflicted, 32X Doom is one of the best ways to play Doom. And I, I think this is really proving it. And like you said, it's it's pr- likely going to become the best way to play it outside of the original PC version with all of these upgrades. It's cool that people are so dedicated to this. Um, it's cool if it brings some more attention to 32X, which I think is a criminally overlooked console. <laughs> Criminal might be a little too strong, but <laughs> no, but you no. are educating the masses to kind of give it a second look because because it, it's pretty pretty easy to just kind of uh, roll your eyes at thirty two X because uh, uh, you know it's very kind of limited uh, traction uh, it got and uh, it's just uh, uh, that and then of course the CD add on to uh, they they came you know because the Genesis was becoming a plug and play platform for all sorts of goodies. Where eventually, if you added all these things, you'd be kind of built a small houseboat. <laughs> to yeah, it was Sega was starting to turn your your Genesis was starting to turn into like the old school stereo systems, where you'd have all the different pieces connected <laughs> through the amplifier. Yeah, and that was in uh, the Nintendo sixty four. Uh, one of one of their paths that they gave some pretty serious consideration to, to kind of bump it up to its next level was also going down the stereo component route. That they, oh, we're going to put a base underneath it that's basically the same footprint as the uh, the sixty four, but now brings in all the all the other goodies uh, as well. And uh, they prototyped that, began to look at it, but it was something that never saw the light of day. Unlike 32x, so yeah. So if uh, if you're a 32xer, uh, uh, let Mike know because you're kindred <laughs> spirits for sure. Also, um, obviously, you guys are going to, and this isn't like we don't know him. We're not getting anything for this, but our GT85, who has great 
retro gaming channel, literally wrote a book about 32X. So I highly recommend it. I have the book. I read it. It's really good. Yep. We'll also include a link for where you can get that uh, as well, which is actually probably a purchase I need to make. So uh, I look forward to look forward to reading that. So, so uh, believe it or not, this will not be the last time we talk about Doom this year. Uh, more coming. Uh, we are busily trying to kind of play all the, the various ports on different platforms so we can kind of have a big, uh, big discussion on uh, experiences across platforms and, and all that good stuff. So that'll be uh, that'll be coming uh, soon. So anything else on uh, that? And thanks to Sega Lord X who uh, put out the video, kind of talking a little bit more about the three dot one version of Resurrection for um, for Doom. Uh, we'll include a link to to that video as well. So anything else, sir? Uh, not too much to add to it. There is a similar kind of project that was done for Mortal Kombat two for thirty two X. But it, it's minor, the tweaks they had to do to that, because Mortal Kombat 2, and I didn't know this at the time. This is something I've only become aware of more recently, and I'm not sure how I wasn't aware of it at the time. But Mortal Kombat 2 was not well received for 32X, which was a surprise to me to learn, because I remember playing it with my friends. It is the best 32X game, in my opinion. It is as close to the arcade as you could have possibly gotten on consoles. If you put that up against Super Nintendo and Genesis versions, which were both great, it just blows them away. It's so close to the arcade game. And uh, speaking as somebody who has the arcade cabinet, it's very close to the arcade game. Other than the sprites being smaller and a few things missing, some background details and stuff, it's really, really close. Um, I was very surprised to learn that there was a backlash against it, which now I understand is because... It was apparently at the time released with a $70 price tag Mm, when the game was issued, which would be the equivalent of it being like $150 today. And I don't know how I think I I think I paid for it with like gift cards. And that's probably why it didn't click at the time. Um, But me and my friends absolutely love that game. And I think the issue was the Genesis version had just come out like six months before that. So people had just paid 40 or $50 for that. And now we're expected to pay $70 to upgrade just six months later kind of thing. So I think it was more that than the game itself, but there, there is that takes it to basically just arcade. Perfect. There's a similar project to this as well. Again, not as extensive because it's not missing as much content. Yeah. And boy, there was a lot missing and that that ground's been made up, uh, which Definitely, definitely improves the Doom experience. Yeah, Doom was missing entire levels. And because of that, bosses, I do want to state, though, because I've seen this stated in so many videos and it's not true. The BFG is in 32X Doom and even in the original cartridge version, it's there. It exists in there. The level where you initially get it is not there. So you have to get it later, or use cheats and things like that. But it's in the game still. When we do our Doom show, I'm going to talk about some other things that I've learned okay. <laughs> with Doom. Looking forward to that. Yeah, Ooh. there's real. I'm making a lot of really detailed notes about the different ports now that I've played them all for like a million hours each. Like I'm noticing weird little things now <laughs> that I think will make the video interesting for our fellow Doom fans. Yep. Yep. So keep your eyes up for that, folks. I'll be coming in a little bit. And uh, thanks for watching. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>